I want you to prepare yourself for a great word from the Lord just for you. Please like and share. I know you're going to enjoy this message. Prepare yourself. Get your paper and pen if you believe you need it. Let's get ready to go into the message. While you're standing to your feet, would you turn with me to the book of Ephesians? Ephesians chapter 4. For many of you, it's familiar. Is that Brother, brother Barnes? Is that Brother Barnes? I want to make sure I see real good. Uh, these heavy lights in my eyes. Sister Carrington, it's not fair. You're blind, brother. I'm going to get uh, Brother Wadley. Watch him. He can come up here and deal with some of these lights. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 11 through 16. It's familiar for many. gave some to be apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of of the Son of God to a perfect or complete man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And everybody say amen. Before you take your seat, would you say this real loud to help reinforce uh, for your memory? Everybody just look at somebody and say, I need your gift. That was a little weak, a little whack. Uh, would you put it up to about a seven or eight and say, I need your gift. Come on, let's say it a little bit stronger. Look at somebody else and say, I need your gift. You can have your seats on this Sunday. Um, Brother Petrie, I think some people have forgotten. Um, many of us, we grew up uh, in a time where we had to go to church. Anybody remember, you had to go to church. Uh, uh, w w not only did we have to go to church, we had to be involved. <laughs> uh, I don't, you, uh, I, and I mean from young age, we, we had to be involved. My mother did not tell us a particular area that we had to be involved in, Brother Brandon, but we had to be involved. Uh, I can remember one of my elder brother. Uh, brothers, um, Elder Ricky, uh, he chose singing. He got in the choir. Uh, uh, Ricky can sing. Uh, he's he's a songster. Uh, he he can sing. Uh, my elder brother Danny, uh, he was in the audio ministry up in the uh, sound booth uh, at the church. It had a balcony uh, that went all the way around, and he was up in the balcony uh, in the sound booth. Um, 
I chose the music area. I chose to play the git fiddle, guitar. Uh, I played bass guitar and lead guitar. I played the drums uh, and moved on into keyboard. Uh, I, I chose that area. Um, uh, I heard uh, Minister, uh, Brother Brandon, Minister uh, Carrington uh, made mention about you and Elder Leon. I leaned back to Sister Bonner. And I told her, he didn't say nothing about my singing. <laughs> I, he didn't. I, so all that told me, brother, was I need to turn it up. I need to let him know that was me with that tenor voice. <laughs> Somebody in the room has said, no, Pastor, no. <laughs> no, let him, let him point them out. Uh, but I remember growing up, uh, uh, we went to church all the time. All of the time. Uh, for me, uh, at a Pentecostal church, we went to Sunday school. Anybody ever remember Sunday school? Uh, that's where they didn't have Bible colleges for our community back then, but you got what you needed to know about uh, uh, the Bible in Sunday school. Everybody, every age uh, was in Sunday school. Then we had Sunday morning service. That was after Sunday school. Then we had uh, Sunday evening, we had something called YPWW. Yeah. Now, I done lost some of y'all. That's young people willing workers. Yeah. Uh, for the young ladies, they had something called YWCC, Young Women Christian Council. That was on Sunday evenings. And then we went into Sunday night yeah. service. Yeah. Have, I, have I lost any of y'all yet? Now, don't you think Sunday was the only time of the week? That was just the first day of the week. Because then we would have Tuesday night service. We would have Thursday night Bible study. We would have, uh, 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 not, uh, that's not even counting choir rehearsal. Uh, uh, God forbid, it's, it's taboo now for many, but we had vacation Bible school. Y'all remember uh, Vacation Bible School, uh, you may have gotten out of public school, but we were going to keep you in school. Uh, uh, and then that's not even counting. I don't want to go down too many on my list. But I, can, can I just, just mention one more? God forbid that was a revival. You would think they would let us off on Sunday nights. But brothers and sisters, I don't care how long the revival. I, I remember one year where we grew up, that brother, uh, you know, people blame stuff on the Lord. I feel the Lord uh, urging me, the Spirit of God is saying, let's take it one more week. <laughs> Can I throw this in there? Y'all put your religious rocks down, but, but we can't validate a whole lot of stuff we put on God. So when they said, I believe the Lord is telling us we need one more week. I was like, no, he, no, he wasn't. No, it wasn't God. That's you. That's you for whatever the reason. And, uh, and then, then if you really went old school uh, to my mother's church, uh, 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 Bethel, uh, uh, their uncle and great uncle and great great uncle Jones, he didn't understand one week or maybe two weeks. That brother actually had a month. Gabriel revival. What the heavens? I was like, man, man. And he wasn't short winded. See, y'all be looking at the clock and talking about that's how long you're going to be. And they're like, all right, all right, the game and all of this. He didn't care. I think the clock was broke on purpose. Because he would hold all night. You remember uh, uh, Evangel Jones, he wore his pants up. Uh, uh, but he would be, uh, I, I'm saying all that to say, I was brought up in a time where you had to be at church all the time. Everybody say all the time. Wasn't brought up in this new age where your kids, uh, baby, we going to church tomorrow. What you going to do? <laughs> that ought to be funny to a whole lot of y'all. Uh, uh, I, mean, I mean, it wasn't even an option. Uh, our clothes was ready. On uh, and all this stuff about I ain't got nothing to wear. Well, you're going to wear what you got on. Uh, it was never a question of whether we were going when we had to ride the bus. We were going to church. Uh, uh, it was never a question if the service would hold late and we had to go to school. We may sleep a little in school, but we was going to be in church. Uh, we had to be in church, Sister Curtis. 
uh, uh, when when it, the service got so late, the kids would be on the back row yeah. sleeping. Y'all yeah. don't know what I'm talking about. It's, I mean, they would be on the, you, all right, you, you, go, you can go to sleep, but you're going to sleep on the back row yeah. when it gets that late. Otherwise, you're going to be up and you're going to be alive in church. Yeah. Yeah. I remember growing up uh, in that. Uh, but, but one thing I have to confess to you today is going to church is not an afterthought for me. I want to go to church. I need to go to church. I look forward to going to church. Because when I go to church, I know I'm actually going to get something that I need. I, I don't go to church. I don't go to church uh, uh, to window shop. You know how you window shop. Uh, you you go to a store, you're not really looking for anything in particular, or you're not planning on really getting it, you just want to see it. That's not why you come to church. When you come to church, you ought to be ready to say, I'm going to get something today. If I need to be loved, I'm going to get the love of God from somebody. If I need to be instructed or given direction on the area, when I get to God's house, around God's people, giving God glory, I'm going to get exactly what I need. Uh, I, I remember uh, those things uh, about growing up in church uh, all of the time. Uh, one of the things I remembered was uh, there were a group of uh, seasoned saints back then uh, that they loved on everybody, even if you needed discipline. Everybody say love. Uh, my mother had sisters spying on us or loving us even when we weren't at church. And, and I remember some of them saying, I'm going to tell your mother, you know you, on, you don't have any business doing that. Today, if you try to tell somebody something, they say, Who is I know she, you ain't my mama. I wish I would have said something like that. Not only would I have gotten, I remember years ago, everybody say years ago, uh, uh, we, I remember getting a whooping by the pastor of the church, Lord's Church. We were out uh, in the foyer, myself and one of the pastor's sons, uh, Brother Brandon, uh, we were we were out in mischief. But but he, uh, I don't know how he he should have been in the pulpit getting ready to preach. That brother worked his way all the way to the front, and we were out in the the uh, lobby area, and he whooped Sherman, and I was saying to myself, yeah yeah yeah. But his belt didn't stop with his child. He whooped me with that belt. And so when I got home, I thought that's, that's all I needed from the Lord. <laughs> My mother said, for him to have to whoop you, you must have been really doing something you didn't have no business doing. And to reinforce whatever it was, she gave me a whooping too. I'm just talking about what I remembered about church. Uh, uh, we had more of a community of people. Uh, uh, we were more together because of all of those services. We, we had more fellowship. We were more like family, even than friends. Uh, I, I remember getting, uh, we were in a particular neighborhood, uh, Brother uh, Petrie, and uh, uh, there was a store around that we would go in between services and around there, one of the young people got in a fight with some of the neighborhood kids. And uh, uh, now I'm, I'm not advocating fighting. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, I was going to say it, but we have some young ears in the room. But, but uh, uh, all right, I'll say it. I don't condone fighting. I will participate, but I don't condone fight it. I'm just simply saying that sometimes you need to, all right, some of these brothers know what I'm talking about. It's not that we look for it, but when it comes to family, all right. And so uh, one of the kids went, and so all of the young people, in particular the brothers, my two brothers that were there and some of the other brothers, we went around to see what was going on and we got caught up in it as well. And the Lord was on our side. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, uh, but, but we were more like family. Everybody say family. As we grew up, even to this day, uh, many of those young people have grown up to be uh, teachers and ministers and pastors of the gospel uh, of the church, even to this day, because we were brought up in that. 
era. We were brought up in that time. Today, I'm wondering, why don't people really love to go to church where you acknowledge God, where you get some biblical foundation, some biblical principles, some instruction uh, of how we are to live our life here on earth instead of allowing the culture uh, to dictate how we ought to live? Uh, all right, I know you, you want me to move on, but when I see a little baby, when I see a little girl uh, 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 wants to dance and shaking all around and, and, and doing all, but she don't know how to, how to be respectful to a grown-up, yes. that baby need to be in church somewhere. Now, I'm not saying that parents uh, negate their, their discipline or negate their instruction because all of us uh, have to take our part in training them up in the way they should go. But when I come to church, there's something that you get at church that you're not going to get in the public school. There's something that you get in church that you're not going to get in college. There's something that you get in church that you're not going to get in just your neighborhood. You ought to want to come to church because this is a place where God teaches us how we're to live our life every age everybody say every age every age I remember uh, those things because we were a part of one another uh, I remember uh, I remember the preacher preaching I remember the preacher preaching brother and uh, he said uh, one day I was playing the drums brother Brandon I was praying the drums when uh, Ludwig, I think it was popular then. I don't even know if they still make them. Uh, 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 Ludwig's. Uh, uh, they were, I was playing the drums and I had torn the ligaments in my left uh, knee. And I remember this preacher, uh, he came and he said, God is healing somebody's left knee right now. And I didn't pay any attention to it because I was busy playing the drums uh, trying to be cute in front of all of the young ladies. Okay, anyway, and so, uh, uh, and, and, and so I got up off the drums and, and left, and, and, and I, where I used to walk with a limp, that night after service, it was a Sunday night, uh, uh, and uh, I remember walking uh, uh, around and didn't even think about it. When I got home, my mother and t my two brothers said, Terry, you're not limping anymore. You're walking straight. The doctor said you would not only walk straight again, but you wouldn't be able to run. My testimony today is even at this age, I could probably beat all y'all running. Now, why am I saying? Because there was something in the house of God that you could get and that you would get that you wouldn't get nowhere else. Uh, today, however, people come to church uh, and, and, and they want to be more like spectators. They want the music ministry to entertain them. Uh, they want uh, everything. I was talking to Brother uh, Smith earlier this morning, Brother Quaylen, that's over the audio ministry. And uh, yes, that, that's a hard task. Uh, I was telling Brother Smith, Sister Justine, how, uh, let me just put her on blast. Uh, sister, my, my sister Justine, uh, she used to deal with the audio ministry before Brother Smith, and uh, she got an attitude with it. So she would, we would be in other churches, large churches, and God forbid something go wrong. You know how to mic go. <laughs> Y'all never been? And so Justine would. thinking okay I mean people mess up or you ever been in a service I might as well put it out there I only got a few more minutes uh, you ever been in a service I was messing with brother Smith this morning and the, I mean it didn't matter how large it is the sound system is and so sister Justine she started texting me in church brother thinking, oh, Lord, is the Lord texting me? Is Jesus saying something? Justine saying, do I need to get up and go back there and show them what they need to be doing? And, uh, uh, uh. and so I was telling uh, uh, Brother uh, Smith this morning, I said, people, sometimes they don't understand 
that everybody in the church, uh, uh, no matter what they do, everybody has a part to play and their part is important. Yeah. Everybody say it's important. All right, see, I, I haven't got down your road yet. Pastor, I don't know what to do. I don't know what my ministry is. I don't know what my gift is. I'm coming. Hold on, hold on. Uh, 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 oftentimes, uh, uh, people, have you, sisters, have you ever went into the ladies' bathroom and you said, oh, n oh, <laughs> I'm going back down the street to the service station. Y'all know my story. I told you about how I was ministering at another church that I won't name. Uh, and uh, I saw one of the sisters coming out of the ladies. She, I saw her go in the ladies' bathroom, and I saw her immediately come out saying, I didn't go in there. I don't know what was going on. But her face, her expression said, no, no. But not, while I didn't go in there, I have been into, I'm, I'm going to get there. Everybody say, I need your gift. Say it like you mean to say, I need your gift. I have been into a men's bathroom where I saw the ground. Who was that running? I went into a men's bathroom where it smelled so bad, I thought maybe the sewage or the, gar the garbage had started to come back up. I I'm, well, Pastor, why are you bringing that up? Because there's something called preparation ministry that gets the house ready for the people of God. Everybody has a part they can play. And I believe that uh, Paul in the book of Ephesians brings out something uh, that, that uh, God gives to everyone and God calls them gifts. Everybody say gifts. Say it like you mean to say gifts. Uh, you can say, Pastor, I don't know what mine is. Or you may know what it is and you're just selfish. Uh, you can say, Pastor, is that, would that be considered a spiritual gift? Uh, whatever it is. I, I, I'm not able to sing. Uh, Elder Witherspoon, uh, to this morning, he was singing and uh, he did some runs, a couple of runs in there. And I wasn't able to do all of them, but I followed pretty close. He did, whatever it was, I, I followed, I was right in there with him. I was right in there with him. Uh, sister, I was, okay, I didn't hit the note like he hit the note. When I got to a certain point, mine went, but I wanted him to know he wasn't the only one with a gift to sing. Pastor, Pastor, can, really, all that, that's right, Pastor, go on sing, get me out there and be taken. Listen, y'all, this was our pastor. But, but, but Paul, I think, brings out to the church, and this is not the only place because there are supportive scriptures uh, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 4 through 8. Uh, also in, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, really verse 1 through 31, uh, Paul brings it out. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Dr. Ella uh, uh, Pearson Mitchell uh, believes the usual reading uh, in the book of Corinthians, uh, 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 when it's looked through the lens of God's eye, it uses a word that, that simply worded the word one. Everybody say one. He says all of the gifts are really one part of the body of Christ. Everybody say, I need your gift. Uh, and, and so what, what over and over you are find in scripture where God is saying uh, if you're going to be a part of the body of Christ you got to understand that you are one and you are gifted to, to be a part and to do your part in the church now, now pastor why are you saying this uh, are you saying that I need to get busy first yes Uh, but, 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 but Pastor, I work on, on some Sundays. Okay. Pastor, I don't know my specific area where the, the, the gift can really flow. I love this. I love it. Everybody say, hold on. I was going to use a prop today. Uh, uh, Sister uh, uh, Petty, I was going to use a prop today. I was going to put out certain things. I thought about putting a mic stand uh, right here. I thought about uh, uh, putting uh, 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 a, a, a picture right here. thought about putting an instrument right here. And then the last one, I thought about putting a broom. You can find your gift. 
All you got to do is say, God, I'm available. Yeah. Uh, it was years ago. It was years ago that uh, uh, a choir, when we used to really have choirs, uh, they said, Lord, I'm available to you. Uh, Elder Leon Witherspoon Jr. wrote uh, a song uh, years ago, uh, I think maybe two or three years ago, uh, he did it. You know, sometimes, y'all pray for Elder Witherspoon. He's so selfish sometimes. Uh, uh, he put out music. Uh, you know, some people don't know how to encourage you, do they? <laughs> he, he puts out music. He has one, I think, coming out next month, a month after, this month. July. Uh, so, so go on all of your, your smartphones and everything and get it. You'll be blessed. But, but uh, uh, he, he put out, uh, I think, not the last one, but the one before that uh, was, uh, well, employ me. Everybody say employ me. Now, now, he put that out, and I still have it on my phone. I listen to it often with other because I recognize that Whatever you are gifted at doing, God expects you to do it, and it's for the body of Christ. Paul says something in the book of Ephesians, and, and lest I hold you uh, too long, uh, he says something that really ought to grab your attention this morning, and then I'll be through with this. Paul says, in the book of Ephesians, uh, in particular verse 12, Paul says, you are gifted to minister. You are gifted to serve. You are gifted to bless somebody else. Somebody say, I need your gift. Whatever you can do, it's really to help somebody else. I know you're thinking to yourself, on my job, I do a job to get paid. But they pay you so you can do the job for somebody else's benefit. Paul says there in verse 12, he says that you have to understand that you are equipped for the ministry of the saints. I, I'm gifted so that I can minister to somebody else. I'm, I'm gifted so that somebody else will be blessed. Somebody else would be helped. Your gift uh, equips you to minister. Your gift. Uh, well, what does it do? Well, if you are gifted, you, you can be gifted to bless somebody at home. You can be gifted to bless somebody at school. You can be gifted to bless somebody at work. You can be gifted to bless somebody at church. You can be gifted to bless somebody in your neighborhood. Whatever you have a gift in, it's not for you. It's to be able to bless somebody else. I remember, I, some of you know, uh, Sister Castle likes highfalutin restaurants. She liked those restaurants where, where, where you had to pay a lot. And uh, I confess to you because uh, some of the places she loved to go, the food is excellent. I mean, it's good. It'll make you, mm, make you do all of that. Uh, I remember going to uh, one of the restaurants uh, that she liked going to. The average, I think we left out of that, that place, that uh, bill for just the two of us was close to $300. And, uh, 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 and it, the food was worth it. I'll tell you that. It was, I like lobster. And so it had what stuff where it, you dipped it in this special uh, 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 butter and it got out and it dripped. And it was saying to me, J -j I dare you. But I took note, everybody say you're gifted. Uh, I took note of, uh, of the person that was serving us, the waiter, and this is what he was do doing when I looked. He was doing this. And so I would drink a little of my drink, and the next thing I know, before I could get it halfway, he was right on. Is there anything you need? I remember uh, 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 some people like bread at the, everybody say, I, 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 I need your gift. Uh, I remember uh, the little crumbs from the bread got on the table. This guy came with a special tool. To myself, you working on that tip, man. You better go. <laughs> he came over and he said, uh, uh, is everything all right? Is there anything else you need? I said to myself, you're going to make me save my pennies more often. I'm taking this woman back here. Now, see, some of y'all, y'all don't understand that. Have you ever went to a place and all your drink gone for the last 10 minutes and you done got parched and you're wondering, well, 
Have you ever have you ever uh, 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 got uh, got bread and it was so cold and hard and 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 nasty that it looked like they may have gotten it out of the refrigerator and brought it? They're working on their tip too, sweetheart. I was thinking about uh, uh, writing one guy uh, on his uh, receipt when it said tip. I was going. I didn't do it, but I was going to write on there. You're fired. That was his tip. Uh, but I took note that the person that was at that particular restaurant, they not only did their job, they knew that their job was important. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're talking about 15, 18, 20% tip. I went way over that because that person made me feel like they knew what they were doing. Pastor, why are you bringing all of that up? Because if you are gifted, it's to bless somebody else. But there's something else I saw in this uh, text here in Ephesians uh, chapter 4. Uh, here uh, I saw not only uh, 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 your gift equips you to minister, but I also saw your gift builds other people up. Yeah. Everybody say, build me up. Build me up. Say it like you mean it. Say, build me up. People get enough people tearing them down at work, backbiting, lying, trying to cause you to lose your job or look bad on your job. Uh, people have challenges even uh, in their own space at home. Sometimes you never know. You never, uh, you never know what a person deals with at home. When you come to church, don't you know God has gifted you to help build somebody up? Uh, 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 yesterday, 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 I was at the service of the, the the celebration of life of Mother Johnson, and 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 I saw my play brother, uh, uh, Bishop Ed Johnson, when him and his wife came, and and they had him. I didn't know who was going to eulogize his mother, and his father is there, and his sisters are there, his children, and uh, 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 I, I saw him there, and I noticed on the program he was eulogizing his own mother. And that burden, that weight, uh, 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 Arvin, it, it caught me. I'm saying, oh, God, strengthen my brother. Comfort my brother. Encourage my brother. I, I noticed uh, while he was there, and so when they came up and they were coming to the seat, he saw uh, Sister Castle and I, and, and, and I saw in his eyes, he was, I, I didn't have to say nothing right then. My gift was right then to let him know, I got you covered. Yeah, yeah. You're going to be all right. Yeah. I knew that that was a weight on him. Pastor, why are you saying that? Because sometimes you don't have to be in the limelight right. yeah, yeah. to utilize your gift. Right. Yeah. You ought to just build somebody up. Somebody say, build me up. Build me up. Do you not know that your gift is needed to build somebody up? That's right there in the text. Uh, the Bible declares that we are there to edify, to build up, to strengthen, to encourage one another. When I come into the house of God, I ought to come in saying, no matter what I was burdened with, when I came in here, somebody smiled at me. Somebody looked at me and said, be encouraged. Somebody said, you made it to another week, another day. You're in the right place at the right time. As a matter of fact, we try to encourage you by telling you, you you belong here. Not only uh, does the Bible let us know that uh, we need your gifts so that you can minister, so that you can serve, so that you can build up. A third thing there I saw is uh, uh, when we need your gift because it matures us. I, I can't go too far here, uh, Brother Edwards, but I have to say uh, we need some mature saints. All right, ooh. Ooh, I wish I had time to stay on that one for a while. Because what the churches have gotten today uh, is a uh, church has come to a place where we want to be in, entertained or we want our feelings or our emotions to, to come up and to come out. And ooh, we, Pastor, you preached till I felt goosebumps, but you still children tossed to and fro, carried about by every wind of doctrine. Uh, uh, when I come in, somebody just say, I need your gift. When I come in, I need somebody to help mature me. Uh, crying is okay, but every now and then, you need somebody to tell you, I've been through that. 
It's going to pass. Wipe your tears away. Don't you let the devil make you think you're going to stay down. Well, let me just put this in here real quick. One of the things that the devil does for the saints of God that you need to be aware of, you need to grow and mature in is the devil tries to isolate you. He tries to get you to separate. So anything that come up, they made me feel bad. I'm not going this Sunday. Uh, they, didn't sh they didn't give me my flowers. I was the one uh, that moved the speaker over. Didn't nobody say nothing about me, and, 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 and I gave up my favorite seat. Uh, uh, maturity says, don't let the devil isolate you like that. No, no, no. You would be surprised at what people do that you don't even see. It matures you. Everybody say mature. Uh, years ago when Sister Castle wanted to mess up and didn't want to mind. <laughs> you know when you get the mic, you, you just. Uh, but I remember years ago we were, I don't know what we were disagreeing on, but my mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, I knew Aunt Jenny was going to be on my side because I'm her favorite son. Uh, son-in-law, I, I knew, I knew it. And so she said, Terry? I know she's going to tell me, you don't you go in there and get, back then they would say binky. And she don't like it no more, but don't y'all see it. But you, I knew she was going to say, you go tell binky what to do. So I was ready. I had my mother, and she said, I don't know what y'all doing, and I don't know what's going on, but you, you need to get it straight. Don't you let this... I was saying to myself, that ain't what I wanted to hear. I needed you to tell me going there. Uh, I may not slap her, but I would say some words. What it told me was somebody been married more in married more than two years know that every marriage don't always skip through flower beds. I know y'all 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 think because some of these folk make marriage look so good that when they come home, the, the, the atmosphere, the aroma is fragrance all of the time. I mean, it's, uh, but do you not know sometimes Sister Castle disagrees with me? She don't know no better, but sometimes she disagrees with me. I'm right all the time. But, but when I come home, well, you may not be skipping. I know y'all gonna say, that's all right, you gotta go back home now, you gotta go back home. <laughs> Everybody say mature. What, what, what your gift does, it helps mature people around you. It helps let people know you may go through something, but you're going to get past this. You're going to go, you're going to grow after this. Everybody say maturity. And, and it's ironic. Oh, God, I hate to use this one. But it's ironic. Paul says, look, you, you're like children tossed to and fro. You come up with every win of doctrine. Any little thing come up, you're taking it. Paul says, no, when you utilize your gift, you help mature people. Let me give you these last two. Uh, 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 your gift actually helps support the truth. Everybody say, tell the truth. Say it real loud. Say, tell the truth. People don't want to hear that no more because they believe truth is relative uh, to how you feel, what you think, what your opinion is. But there is still some truth that won't change. Somebody say, tell the truth. All right, see, see, y'all acting like you don't want to hear it and the pastor ain't saying it like it ought to be. Uh, have you ever seen somebody that, that they did wrong and they wanted you to support their wrong and you needed to tell them, no, 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 you were wrong. That's wrong. You shouldn't do that. Uh, sometimes I don't like, I hate to say it, but I'm going to tell the truth. Everybody say, tell the truth. Uh, one of my daughters, I won't call her name, but she sometimes call herself getting on me because uh, there's sometimes I, I can be petty. I can be petty. I won't tell you some of the things that I can say about something, but, but, but there are sometimes I can be very petty because I'm thinking, at what age do you stop being childish? At what age? Uh, brother brother uh, Petrie, I'm thinking a, a 50 year old man, you can't dress like no 25 year old and it looks good. I'll rewind. People don't want to admit it. 
your hat to the side, earring, nose ring, pinky ring, navel ring, uh, uh, walking with a with a swag, Gucci, Fucci, Pharaoh. Uh, at what age do you stop saying? Everybody say, I need your gift. And so I was telling somebody, I said, what he needs is another brother to come up and tell him, man, um, no, no, that ain't for you. That ain't, no. Sisters, equal opportunity. Uh, sisters, sisters. I got family in the room, so you have to be careful. <laughs> My wife said, everything is not for you to wear. Somebody just help me say, leave it alone, Pastor. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. All right. All right. I'll, I'll go. See, people play. But, but see, I, I was telling a young lady once, some people don't know what makeup is for. Everybody say, I need your gift. Some people don't know what it's for. And this person was, she put on makeup. She thought it would make her over. But but I thought makeup, I thought makeup was to help highlight your beauty. Well, she covered up all the beauty, sister. And I said, you look like a clown. Okay, I didn't say it out loud, but it was all up here. And she saw it in my face. All right, see some of y'all playing. I'm almost through, I'm almost through. Everybody say, I need your gift. Uh, uh, my daughter, my daughter, uh, uh, she, we went to a church service and this sister, this sister had on so much makeup and extra that it scared Sister Jesty. It scared her. And I'm, I was grown. It scared me too. She had on so much makeup. I said, and so when they said it was the time to go and hug and love on some, somebody said, I need your gift. <laughs> and so I didn't want her to feel too bad but I was thinking the same <laughs> I, see sisters at what age do you say baby red, green, yellow, orange, purple gray, uh, lavender uh, all of them don't go on the face together you, you are not trying to try to match your purse, your shoes, your stocking, your belt, your dress with your face. Everybody say, I need you give. So I told this young lady, I said, sister, uh, you have, oh God, you have the ability. When you, when you put on your makeup, I can actually see the enhancement of your beauty. Why don't you share that with the ladies? I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to, I'm try, uh, uh, now, Pastor, why would you mention all of that? Because God has placed you in the body of Christ with your particular gifts to bless somebody else in ways that you may not have thought of. Yeah. Everything is not Sunday morning tambourine playing. Some things is how to teach, uh, how to teach young ladies with dresses you ought not set any kind of way. Everybody say, I need your gift. Brothers, you ought to tell that brother, brother, that suit is too tight. That ain't the right color for you. Everybody can't get, a, every brother can't get away with wearing high pink suits. You wouldn't let, no, you wouldn't. You would say, no, baby, no, no. You wear that around the house as pajamas, but that don't go in public because your gift in many different ways. All right, uh, this is my last part and then I'm through. Then he says, not only does your gift uh, uh, build one, he says it strengthens, it grows you, it matures you because when you leave out of church, the devil is on the outside waiting to destroy you, waiting to put you down, waiting to, to, to cause confusion. When you come, it's not, now all of that is being said because God said, but I put gifts in everybody to strengthen everybody. 
The other day, uh, I got up out of bed, uh, as I often do. My, my day starts at 320 in the morning. My day starts at 320 in the morning. I'm up early and whether it's a quick devotion or what have you, uh, my day starts at 320. And, uh, and, uh, uh, and so I, I got up uh, early that morning and as I do, uh, even at this age, because I'm fit, uh, I, I get on up. I get on up. I'm, uh, with the crackling and the, and the bone popping and the hurting, I get on up get on up. Now I may walk a little slow when I'm when I'm going uh, but but I get on up and uh, and so I remember getting up and something told me uh, now what you need to do uh, is uh, from now on don't don't just jump up kind of because you're at a certain stage now you want to make sure everything is all right because uh, some of y'all know where you used to jump up you can't jump up no more all right, some of y'all saying, no, Pastor, I know. No, 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 give it time. Give it time. And so I remember I, I got it and something said, no, just check yourself first. Check yourself, check yourself. And so I, I got up and uh, I checked myself and I said, okay, God, I see what you're saying. Now I need to, need to catch myself and grow because I'm not at the same stage as I used to be. When you come into the house of God and your gift is not being utilized, you are not strengthening others. You can help somebody learn more. You can help strengthen somebody. You help the body grow because we are one. Paul says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, in particular verse uh, 11 through uh, uh, 16, he says, you strengthen the body. You, you, you speak the truth. You, you mature the body. You equip the body by just using your gift. By just using your gift. Somebody's going through something today and your gift was specifically given to you by God to help them. Don't be selfish. I need your gift. Don't, don't, don't put your gift aside and say this gift is not important. In Corinthians, he goes down there to say everybody's gift is important. I need your gift. 